I'm a teacher at Linden Public Schools. I am a reading specialist and a special ed teacher, and I'm also a member of NJLA, New Jersey Literacy Association. I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Ken and my friend Shalonda for doing a great job the other days with their read alouds. Um, today I'm going to read you a story called The Lost Kitten, and it is a Ray Craft Pets. And we just want to thank Benchmark for donating these books to us during this difficult time. So every day we've started with a little quote, an inspirational quote to get us through these times. Mine is, this too shall pass. And I think this kind of just means that we're going to get through this. We're going to look back on this um, and we will persevere. I just want to give another shout out to my dear field school number nine people. Um, we miss you terribly. We can't wait to see you again. So before we get started, I want to talk about four vocabulary words that we're going to hear in this story. The first one is kitten. The second one is frowned. The third one is saffron. And the fourth one is allergic. Now, I learn a little bit differently than other people. I like learning through pictures and I think it's good that everybody learns differently. That's what adds creativity to the world. So I learned through pictures and what I did for you is I drew you a kitten underneath. There they are. Frowned. It's a sad expression. See, he looks sad. Can you make a frown face? Good job. The next one is saffron. So saffron is really special. It's a special spice and it comes from a flower. See these middle parts right here? They're actually red. The flower is this beautiful purple. Um, it's a very expensive spice and we will be using this word a lot in this story. It's actually red. It's really pretty. And the last one is allergic. And you can see the girl, she looks like she's sneezing or coughing. And you can be allergic to lots of things, bees, pollen, peanuts. I'm allergic to pollen. So this springtime, my eyes get itchy and they water, my throat gets scratchy. So those are just some examples of vocabulary words and different ways that you can learn about them. Started with our real out, <clears throat> the lost kitten. And I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to show you pictures. Here's some of our characters. Dad plopped a grocery bag on the kitchen table. Over it fell and everything came tumbling out, along with the little kitten. Papa, I don't know. I didn't know that they sold orange kittens at the grocery store, I said. The kitten's fur was softer than cotton, and its tail stuck up straighter than a flagpole. See his face? He was outside our door, said Papa. He's clean and looks well fed. He must belong to one of the neighbors. Purr, purr. The kitten made a noise. That means he likes it, said Papa. I think it means he's hungry, I said. I have the perfect thing, Papa said. How about a plate of chicken and rice with saffron? Vocabulary words. Our leftovers from dinner. As I watched the kitten, I thought about all the things we could do together. Can we keep him? I asked. Papa's left eyebrow went up like this, like it always does when he's thinking too much. Sweetie the kitty must have an owner, said Papa. Oh, hey, Papa, but if he doesn't, can we keep him? We will see what Mama says, said Papa. So we put the kitten in a cardboard box and went to knock on doors. See them? Knocking on the doors? 
First, we rang the bell on Mrs. Asuena's house. Does this kitten belong to you, I asked. No, Amelia, she answered. This kitty isn't mine, but let me give you a blanket to keep him warm. I put the blanket over the kitty. Papa, do you think we can keep him? I asked. No, sweetie, said Papa. We need to keep looking for his owner. Next, we knock on Mr. Evans' door. Does this kitten belong to you, I asked. No, Amelia, this little fur ball isn't mine, said Mr. Evans. But how about a stuffed mouse for him to play with? The kitten batted the toy mouse around the box. Papa, do you think the kitten can stay with us now, I asked. No, whoever lost him might be looking for him right now, answered Papa. The bell rang through the next house. Does this kitten belong to you, I asked. No, Amelia, Mrs. Romano said. Our kitten is black and white, but take this can of tuna for him. I added the can of tuna to the box. Papa, this has to mean something. Now we have a blanket, food, and a toy for him. Can he please come live with us, I beg. Papa's left eyebrow went up. He was thinking again, so we walked to the next house. neighbor's real cat. We lightly rapped on Mrs. Manuela's window. Mrs. Manuela, did you lose this kitten? I asked. Achoo! Oh, good gracious, no. I'm allergic to cats. Allergic vocabulary word. Next, Papa walked to the cruise's house. I hope no one would open the door. Then my friend Nathan hopped out onto the steps. I like dogs, he said, but take this. He threw a ball of yarn into the box. Our box was getting so full the kitten could barely fit. Can we take him home now? There's Nathan. See the ball of yarn? Mama was waiting at the door when we got home. Look, Mama, we found a lost kitty. Can we keep him? That's when I saw a small boy and a lady just behind Mama. This is Louis. He lost his kitten, said Mama. I looked at the boy. The boy looked at me. I closed my eyes tight and stretched out my arms. Louis looked into the box and frowned. That's not my lost kitten, he said. Suddenly the kitten purred. That means he likes you, Louis said. That means he's hungry, I said laughing. I ran into the kitchen and got the rest of the chicken and rice with saffron. What's his name, Louis asked. He doesn't have one yet, I said. We watched the kitten gobbling up the chicken and rice with saffron. What do you think they're going to name the kitten? <gasps> saffron, we both shouted. Saffron seemed to agree. Then he stretched out and took a nap. So they named the kitten Saffron. I would like you guys to do following that read aloud. It's called making connections. And it's kind of when you have something in common or similar with the story. So there are three types of connections. Text to text, text to self, and text to world. Text to text is kind of when a story that you just read reminds you of another story that you read. See my little picture of a book here? That's another visual to help you. The next one is text to self. This is actually a connection that happened to you yourself. See, there you are. 
The last one is a text-to-world connection, and that's something that you might have seen on the news, something happening right now in life. So that's a text-to-world connection. And when we use connections, we use this little sentence stem. It's called, this reminds me of. Your job today is to make a connection. You can jot it down anywhere you want. That means write. You can write a connection of this story, The Lost Kitty, to something that reminds me, that reminds you of yourself. So this reminds me of my sister found a dog. It's a text to self-connection. This reminds me of a time when my sister found a dog in college and she took it home with her and she tried to keep it but the dog actually had a chip in its um, body which tells you that it belongs to somebody and that person had contacted a veterinarian and they had to exchange the, the dog at the vet and my sister had to let Max go. That's what she named him. But we had him for about two weeks and she was devastated, so sad. But that would be a type of connection, text to self. So let me see your connections. Make sure you share them with us. So I just want to thank you for joining us today. We are on the board. We love to help you guys and stay safe. Please continue watching so you can see our Twitter and Instagram account. Thank you.